The NASA M2F-1 was a lightweight, unpowered prototype aircraft, developed to flight test the wingless lifting body concept. Its unusual appearance earned it the nickname, Flying Bathtub, and was designated the M2F-1, the M referring to, manned, and F referring to, flight, version. In 1962, NASA Dryden Management approved a program to build a lightweight, unpowered lifting body prototype. It featured a plywood shell placed over a tubular steel frame crafted at Dryden. The lifting body concept originated in the mid-1950s at the National Advisory Committee for Aeronautics Ames Aeronautical Laboratory, Mountain View, California. By February 1962, a series of possible shapes had been developed, and R. Dale Reed was working to gain support for a research vehicle. The construction of the M2F1 was a joint effort by Dryden and a local glider manufacturer, the Briegel Glider Company. NASA craftsmen and engineers built the tubular steel interior frame. Its mahogany plywood shell was handmade by Gus Briegelb and Company. Ernie Loader, a NASA craftsman who had worked on Howard Hughes H-4 Hercules, was assigned to help Briegelb. Final assembly of the remaining components was done at the NASA facility. The wingless, lifting body aircraft design was initially conceived as a means of landing a spacecraft horizontally after atmospheric re-entry. The absence of wings would make the extreme heat of re-entry less damaging to the vehicle. Rather than using a ballistic re-entry trajectory like a command module, very limited in maneuvering range, a lifting body vehicle had a landing footprint of the size of California. The first flight tests of the M2F1 were at Rogers Dry Lake, at the end of a tow rope attached to a 1963 Pontiac Bonneville convertible. On April 5, 1963 test pilot Milt Thompson lifted the M2F1's nose off the ground for the first time while being towed. The little craft seemed to bounce uncontrollably between the main landing gear wheels, and stopped when he lowered the nose to the ground. He tried again, but each time with the same results. He felt it was a landing gear problem that could have caused the aircraft to roll on its back if he had lifted the main gear off the ground. After looking at movies of the tests, it was decided that the bouncing was probably caused by unwanted rudder movements. The control system was modified so that the joystick controlled the elevens rather than the rudder, which solved the problem. It was found that the car used to tow the aircraft was not powerful enough to lift the M2F1 entirely off the ground, so the FRC arranged to have the tow car hot-rodded by Bill Straub. The modifications tuned the engine for increased power, added a roll bar, and turned the front passenger seat to face aft so the passenger could observe the aircraft. Speeds on tow inched up to 110 miles per hour, which allowed Thompson to climb to about 20 feet, then glide for about 20 seconds after releasing the line. That was the most that could be expected during an auto tow. These initial tests produced enough flight data about the M2F1 to proceed with flights behind a U.S. Navy C-47 tow plane at greater altitudes. The M2F1 had recently been equipped with an ejection seat and small rockets, referred to by the test team as Instant L.D., in the tail to extend the landing flare for about five seconds if needed, and Thompson prepared for the flight with a few more tows behind the Pontiac. Forward visibility in the M2F1 was very limited on tow, requiring Thompson to fly about 20 feet higher than the C-47, so he could see the plane through the nose window. The C-47 took the craft to an altitude of 12,000 feet, where free flights back to Rogers Dry Lake began. Pilot for the first series of flights of the M2F1 was NASA research pilot Milt Thompson. Typical glide flights with the M2F1 lasted about two minutes and reached speeds of 110 to 120 miles per hour. The lifting body descended at an average rate of about 3,600 feet per minute. At 1,000 feet above the ground, the nose was lowered to increase speed to about 150 miles per hour, flare was at 200 feet from a 20 degrees dive. The landing was smooth, and the lifting body program was on its way. It proved the lifting body concept and led the way for subsequent metal, heavyweight, designs. Chuck Yeager, Bruce Peterson and Donald L. Malik also flew the M2F1. More than 400 ground tows and 77 aircraft tow flights were carried out with the M2F1. The success of Dryden's M2F1 program led to NASA's development and construction of two heavyweight lifting bodies based on studies at NASA's Ames and Langley Research Centers, the Northrop M2F2 and the Northrop HL-10, both built by the Northrop Corporation, and the U.S. Air Force's X-24 program. The lifting body program also heavily influenced the Space Shuttle program. The M2F1 program demonstrated the feasibility of the lifting body concept for horizontal landings of atmospheric entry vehicles. It also demonstrated a procurement and management concept for prototype flight research vehicles that produced rapid results at very low cost.